So a certain gentleman named Mr. Clive Woodward post the Wales victory over the Springboks in South Africa while basking in the glory of the Wales beating the world champions. In his column in the Daily Mail, and I quote, Clive Woodward says, I think Wayne Pivak should get a pat on the back. He had a lot of confidence going to South Africa and spoke openly about that. I'm sure I wasn't the only one to think that confidence was misplaced. But Pivak and his team have delivered. They should have won the first test and then claimed the second. Some will point out South Africa's 14 changes and say Wales were given a chance. But that was still a strong Springbok side. With Eben Itzabet and Henry Pollard, any team that can bring in the best player in the Premiership in Andre Esterhuizen has serious quality. Well done Wales. Now go and finish the job. Right, Mr. Clive Woodward, he was basking in the glory of Wales' victory over the Springboks. Post the Wales' victory over the Springboks, there were some people within the quarters of African rugby calling for the head of the Springbok coaches. Can you guys believe that? So, here I have a tweet from Skalkberger Sr., the father of the Skalkberger. Springbok legend, where Skalk Berger, he was himself a Springbok in the 80s. And the gentleman tweets here, he says here, If you listen to the coach, the captain and the director of rugby, of South African rugby, and you see how they perform, then you know somewhere there is either showboating or we, have, or we are much weaker than we think we are. No structure, coaching or game skills. Sad to say, Rugby World Cup only a year away. In my response via Twitter, I responded by saying, You people are a fickle bunch. These coaches have nothing to prove. Let them work. Judge them after 2023 Rugby World Cup. I've seen other YouTubers also flouti flouting the, the question, should the Springbok coaches be fired after this loss against Wales? Well, <laughs> to me it's crazy how people can just now press the panic button um, due to one loss against Wales after the South African coaches needed or made 14 changes in the post-match conference or um, a media interview. Nenaba clearly said that the second test was the ideal time to give the, the, the fringe players an opportunity to play against Wales in the series. And that if he, have cho if he had chosen the first team players, a victory wasn't guaranteed. And what if he, and what if he, has, he chose the first team players and the box still lost the game? Then obviously the fringe players wouldn't, would have the opportunity to showcase themselves to the Springbok selectors. So, yeah, I don't know. I think um, Wales deserve the victory, but there's also a huge amount of positives from a South African point of view. Up until the 78th minute, the B side, was, they were winning the game. So I don't know why people are now so all of a sudden pressing this panic button. But um, yeah, I think this loss was the loss was actually good for South Africa in a way. It's never nice uh, losing a game, but like the coach said, like Nidamba said, is that he got answers, and hopefully the players that got opportunity to play, they will just better themselves through this experience. So guys, I'd like to hear from you what you guys think. By the way, if you're on Twitter, you are welcome to follow me on Twitter. I'm very active, especially during game days, the whole Saturday, where I tweet about the game and I give comment as the games go along. I give my comment and I interact. So if you're on Twitter, you can catch me there. Uh, my handle is Peter the Rugby Eater. So guys, thank you for watching this video and I'll catch you guys on my next video.